you are going to be editing your processing paper using this video. Feel free to pause it at any time so that you can go in and make any changes you need to. So the first thing, like I said on our last paper, because your paper represents you and your best work, you need it to, to be polished prior to submitting it. This means there are several things you need to check on your paper. This slideshow is going to walk you through the editing process for the paper that you're going to be submitting. We expect you to take this one slide at a time, complete the editing for each step. There should be minimal errors in the areas that are covered in this presentation, so follow the directions as you go through this and make sure you make the proper changes. So the first thing is, is your paper in MLA format? Your paper needs to be in MLA format. You need to have the right setting right here with your name, your teacher's names, the English class, and the date that this is due. You need to have the page number in the top right-hand corner. You get to that by going to insert page number, and you click on the picture at the top of page, and then you put your name in front of it. You need to have a title for your paper. You need to make sure that you've indented the first line of your first paragraph. Every paragraph should be indented. That's how we know when a new paragraph begins. If you do not have your paper in proper MLA format, pause this recording now and go back and make sure that you do that. Pay attention to this date here. The date is written in a certain way. This is how it needs to be written for MLA format. So, have you structured your paper properly? We gave you some specific guidelines when you were writing this paper telling you exactly how we needed it structured. So the first paragraph that should be indented is your introduction paragraph. This is almost like a speech in the way that it's written, so you should be greeting your audience in a friendly way. And remember, you identified who your audience was. You might describe your audience when you do this. I know that you're someone who loves grilled cheese. I know that you're someone who, whatever it is, is very athletic. Explain to them how amazing this skill is that you have to teach them. Explain why you are qualified to teach it to them. What makes you the expert in this area? And then tell them those prerequisite skills that they need to know. All of this should be in your introduction paragraph. If you are missing any part of this in your introduction paragraph, you need to go back and edit your paper. If you're unsure of what prerequisite skills are, Go back and look at the initial paper we gave you because the definition is there. Your second paragraph should be your process paragraph. This is where you're doing your explaining. So in five to 10 steps, the process that the person must follow to complete your action. You need to have this explained here. Each step should be three to four good sentences long. It's not a list. You don't just say first this, then this, then this. You're explaining it. You're describing it to us. You're using specific detail and explaining in writing what the audience needs to do to accomplish the task you are sharing with them. You're also going to share two mistakes that one might make when they're doing this. One might add too much cheese, but don't do it because if you do, it will slide out from the, from the sandwich, right? So explain how to correct it or to avoid it. So in order to avoid that, only use two slices or only use a handful, right? So in your processing paragraph, we have on here five to 10 steps, but we, I think we told you minimum of eight. So you need to have your eight steps. They need to be listed in complete, specific detail in writing. You've explained every single step. You've also explained two mistakes that one might make and how they can correct or avoid those mistakes. If your processing paragraph does not have all of those parts, you need to go in and edit it. Your final paragraph is your conclusion paragraph. For your conclusion paragraph, we've told you that you need to describe for your audience what a perfectly executed skill looks like. So if it's a grilled cheese sandwich, you are describing what that sandwich looks like with some detail. Then you can explain what the rewards are for losing this skill. Why is it a great thing to be able to do? Be upbeat and encouraging and on a positive note. This conclusion paragraph should be three to four sentences long. For this assignment, you may speak in the second person. You may use the pronoun you. So whereas in academic writing, we don't typically do that, for this type of writing, you can. So if you have used the word you in this paper, then you are okay to go.
you need to listen to each sentence that you wrote. So now that you've made sure you have all of the proper parts, I want you to make sure if you haven't installed text-to-speech on your Chrome browser, then you need to do that. Because then what you can do is highlight two or three sentences at a time and click listen, and the computer will read it to you. You're thinking to yourself as you listen, is this a complete thought? Does this make sense? Are these the words that I want them to be? Do I have the proper words here? Make changes as you listen to each section making sure that your whole paper has good, clean, coherent, and complete sentences. Now, make sure that you've done all of your capitalizing. If you have the words um, that capitalize the beginning of your sentences every single time, any proper nouns that you've used, any names of people or places, any titles of stories, if that's something that you're including, the word I, these are words that are always capitalized. Go back and check your paper for proper nouns and check your paper for the beginning of every sentence and make sure that you have capitalized all of the things you need to, including your title. Punctuation. So make sure that you have ending punctuation for every sentence. Make sure that if you've included a quote of some sort that you have a comma before the quote and quotation marks around it. Make sure if you have written a compound or a complex sentence that you have using, used your commas appropriately. And make sure that you have used apostrophes to show possession. Possession would be like um, Mary's shoes. The shoes belong to Mary, so I would put M-A-R-Y apostrophe S to show that those shoes belong to her. That is possession. Go back and check your paper for punctuation now. Spelling. This is important. Your computer will tell you what words you have spelled wrong. You could also use Grammarly, and Grammarly checks your work not only for spelling, but for some of those grammar errors I just described to you. Change the words that are underlined or bolded that are incorrect for spelling. Hit pause, go back through your paper right now, and make sure that you have done that. All right, so writing academically. We talked about this before. In 10th grade, this is a really big deal on all of your written responses. The only thing that's different for this paper is the pronoun issue. You can use the pronouns for this paper because this paper is one where you are speaking to your audience specifically and you are describing a skill that you are the expert in. So if you have personal pronouns in this paper, that is okay. But I still don't want you to have contractions. So if you have contractions in your paper, I want you to go back and spell them out. Those are words like can't, don't, there, won't, all right? Also, dead words. Make sure you don't have these dead words in your paper. Things, it, that, a lot, this quote. Um, these are words that we don't want to use. We want to be more specific. So make sure you replace those with whatever the things are or whatever it is. Try to fill those spaces in with the proper words instead of these filler words. And you probably didn't use any citing for this um, assignment, but if you did cite something, if you did use somebody else's words or thoughts or ideas, then go ahead and give them credit at the end of your paper. Final check. Look through your paper one last time. Listen to it one more time. Check your punctuation. Check your capitalization. Replace your contractions. Replace those dead words, it, things, a lot. Make sure you have all of the parts of this paper, the structure, so the introduction follows what it's supposed to. The process paragraph has all of the correct parts, all of the steps. Your conclusion paragraph contains what it is supposed to. Check your spelling. If you have any quotes or citations, check that. Make sure your MLA format is correct. Listen to it one last time, and then make sure you submit. When you submit this, make sure you're doing it the right way. We have posted how to submit a Google document. Do not submit a link. Do not submit a link. Please follow the process that we have. Hopefully you've enjoyed writing this paper, you've shown your expertise, and we are going to learn a lot from what you have written.